Howdy folks, John here. Welcome to part 8 of the R2-D2 build series. Today's video is a bit of a milestone. R2 is actually moving for the first time. It's been a fun but long haul to get to this point. Mistakes have been made, and I thought I was being a little bit hyperbolic when I said the legs are going to take a month to print. We're not far off that. And stuff like this certainly doesn't help. Printing in midair. That's a new one. Looking up. What the mothering f <laughs> The main leg components are finally finished and glued together. So today we start on the feet. Lots of parts to them. So fitting the tires to the wheel hub, kind of a challenge. It really depends on how flexible your TPU is. This stuff that I'm using is pretty rigid and found to uh, fit the tire. Best thing to do is to just soak it in boiling water for a while and that softens it up. I've never had TPU tea before, but there's a first time for everything. And we'll just let that soak for a bit. Two very boring minutes later. So the tire's been in the hot water for a couple of minutes here. Nice and soft now. And when you put it on the wheel, just make sure you get the tabs lined up. Because if they're not lined up, it won't uh, sit in the wheel properly. So that's kind of the first thing you have to get. I found with this one, just getting that first one started usually is a good way to do it. And if you need a screwdriver to help stretch it over, like a tire iron, go for it. The first one was not this hard. Yeah, that's what happens when you film, right? If it's going to screw up, it's going to be on the one you're filming. There we go. Done. We're assembling the foot drives tonight. Very straightforward. These are the Mark III foot drives, and the instructions are available on Mr. Badley's downloads. And in the introduction video I did, I said there was no good sources of uh, fasteners and hardware. Uh, no, that was a newbie dumbass statement because all of his instructions are very thorough. All the fasteners you need for each step of the build. So apologies there, Michael. <laughs> you have it well covered. So these go together quite easily. Just follow the instructions. There's a couple of little gotchas and we'll go through it as I uh, get this uh, second foot together. And the first one is, uh, yeah, you can't just snap this together. I suppose it depends on the accuracy of your printer, but uh, my little printer, you know, the holes are really tight for some of the fitment. So I had to uh, file these tenons down to fit into the mortises properly. You know, you still want a nice tight fit, but uh, that's about it. One thing you'll find lots of these little inserts all over the foot files for the square nuts. And there's two types of square nuts. There's thin ones and thicker ones. You have to get the thin ones if you want them to fit properly. You can use the thicker ones, you have to melt them in place. But a lot of these things, you don't want them falling out obviously after you fit them. So what I find works the best is just Put the nut in the hole, make sure it's lined up, you know, it's not sticking high or anything. So the center of the nut is aligned so you can get the fastener in and then just tack it in with a little hot glue. Start getting this together. First step is putting these upper brackets on. So now we just got to get this into the motor bracket side of the frame just uh, fits in real nice give it a few love taps next we're going to fit the intermediate gear before fitting the gears i'm going to lube them up i like uh, white lightning wax based chain lube but you can use whatever lube you want the reason i like this is it's not greasy why is there no jizz coming out so one of the hardest things about building these uh, feet are fitting the gears. 
And I don't know if you can see this, but they use interesting shaped gear teeth. They're not straight gears as we can see. They're not helical. They're kind of this chevron shaped. And what that does is the gears will center on each other because they are chevron shaped like that. They'll center against the other gear, but they make fitting everything kind of a bear because stuff doesn't just slide in. It's got to kind of mesh and wiggle as you put it in. Now, I'm not too sure why uh, Michael uses the chevrons. Perhaps they are stronger than a straight tooth gear. But if anyone knows, leave a comment below. Anyway, to fit this uh, intermediate gear, that's the first thing that has to go in. You just drop it in where the motor would go. It's kind of a trick to get the intermediate gear into its little housing here. Uh, what you kind of do is have to get a gear tooth on this little raised triangle portion here. Get a tooth right in there. And then there's just barely enough room for the teeth to get by. In fact, there isn't enough room. You pretty much have to force it. There we go. Not too sure why that's so tight. I mean, you could, uh, if this wasn't quite as high, this little peak, it would fit in there easier, but no big deal. So now we can fit the motor. Already have the uh, pinion gear on. And I have Loctited this uh, nut in there, so there's no chance of this coming loose. And you just have to line up your wire output on this edge, kind of spread the motor bracket so you can get it in there. And there's a little hole here where that lines up. And I find just leaving this intermediate gear loose in here, not putting the pin through the back so it can float in there a little bit, helps get all the gears lined up a little bit easier. So once you've got your motor clamped in and it's at the right height, you're happy with where the gear is sitting as far as height goes. It's time to put the intermediate gear plate on. I found it helps if you bevel the inside of the hole because we're going to be putting in the uh, intermediate gear pin last and just having that little bevel in there will help the pin find its location and go into the plate. And this just uh, screws in with two screws. And if you really wanted to be cautious, you could Loctite everything. I found the plastic though is holding the screw fairly well. Now we just have to fit the wheel. And you're going to have to experiment a little bit with the wheel height. You can't just put it on and have the bearing riding against the uh, frame here. Uh, probably going to need a couple of little washers. That's what I found with the other one. And you just have to experiment and you've got the right placement for the gear mesh. And because that intermediate gear is floating, this should uh, fall into place fairly easily. Just rotate it. I should it'll make a liar out of me. It's funny, sometimes it just drops in and other times it doesn't. There we go. And it's a little rough, but that's because that intermediate gear is bouncing about. Just lining the hole up so the bearing hole is centered. And now we can put our pin through, hopefully. Push the pin in. And just make sure the wheel spins nice and freely. The gears aren't binding on anything. Looks good. Now we can fit the outer plate, which is just a matter of fitting this on. Actually, you may need another washer in there. And it's just a matter of lining everything up. And just screwing it all together now. So it's all together. You'll notice I haven't put the rear omni wheel in yet. There's two reasons for that. First is I don't have an omni wheel yet. Second, I don't know if I'm going to be using an omni wheel. As you can see, I'm using a roller blade wheel instead. And the primary reason for that is I'm just not convinced that an omni wheel is suited 
for harsher driving environments, i.e. rough pavement with the odd bit of gravel and sand on it. Now I could be totally wrong on that, I have very little experience with Omni wheels. If anyone who's watching this is using Omni wheels in their R2 and you find that they can handle sand and you know rough pavement fine, please let me know. But I just think a roller blade wheel is going to stand up a whole lot better. And they're easy to find and they're inexpensive. These just came out of a set of five of these uh, office chair roller blade casters. I've got these on several office chairs and they are great. And if they can hold my fat ass, they're certainly going to be able to hold R2. And I am using two of the casters in the front foot. And this wheel is right in line with the center line of the uh, drive wheel. But we're still going to get tire scrub and that's the problem with them. When R2 is turning, uh, both the roller blade wheel and the front drive wheel are going to scrub. So I don't even know if they're going to work. But to find out, I have built this uh, little rig here. We've got both feet tied together with this 2x4 and this is, they're placed exactly the same distance they'd be placed apart on R2. I've got my motor controller up here, battery and receiver. Let's see if it even works. So we'll try forward. Nice. Very smooth. The Dimension Engineering Sabertooth here, just a wonderful motor controller, just like the Siren 10 for the dome motor. No whine at all, going slow, very controllable. Just barely pushing the stick forward on the uh, radio here. And fast, holy crow. <laughs> that wasn't even, that was about quarter stick. Now turning. Slow turns, not a problem. It's stationary turning, you can hear the uh, wheels scrubbing. But it's working, like it's driving fine. Now with the extra weight of R2 though, will that be a problem? I think the wheels will just scrub more. So probably going to wear the TPU tires out a lot faster, depending on the surface you're driving on. <laughs> yeah, it's a monster. Of course, the next thing to do is mount all this into R2 and see if it works. Oh, it's fast. Later that night. Well, he's somewhat together. He's moving forwards and backwards, no problem at all. But the turning, there's just too much wheel scrub with all this weight. Like it works, but it vibrates quite a bit. And see it vibrating, it's, yeah. It'll work in a pinch, but I think that I'm going to have to get Omni wheels for the back wheels. The casters up front are working great. No problem with them at all. And now that I know it's pretty much working, I can uh, basically pull everything off now and we can start into the painting. And I do want to start getting it painting and believe it or not, we're still printing. Printing the foot shells right now for the back feet. And then I've still got all the greebles for the uh, two legs. He's quiet otherwise, other than those uh, feet rubbing. It's just silent. 
but I've definitely got to order up two 3.25 inch VEX Omni wheels. That Sabretooth motor controller, again, now I know why everyone recommends it. Fantastic. Thanks for watching, folks. And until next time, happy R2 building. <laughs>